Black Power and walk into Robin Kelly's Freedom Dreams. We're gonna look into how we actually engage in freedom dreaming. So um, I just wanna start with, let me um, share my screen. Dr. Abdullah, can I say something really quickly just to inform folks? Yes, please. So it looks like we said I sent out the wrong link earlier and it seems like everyone has logged in as Christine Margiota. So you'll see on your box, there's like three dots. If you don't mind clicking that and changing your name, it'll say rename. So we'll be able to have your actual name <laughs> for this today. Thank you, Allie. Um, can I have co-host privileges, please? Unless I'm also Christine Margie. No, you you use the correct link. So okay. you're good. Okay, it still has me on participant though. Did you accept the let me try let me do it again. Okay. No, that's somebody in a waiting room. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So we're gonna start with our land, labor and life acknowledgement. Is there someone who wants to open us up and read the first slide? I'm happy to hop in. All right, leading us through breathing as well. Um, so if folks are comfortable, if you're um, in a seated position, if you wanna have your feet flat on the ground or stretch out your back, take a soft gaze or shut your eyes and take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale out through the mouth. Maybe let's do one more. Inhale and exhale. The land that we inhabit is physically situated in the original ancestral homelands of the Tongva people. We pay respect to the Tongva and all indigenous people, past, present, and future, and their continuing presence in the homeland and throughout their historical diaspora. Great, thank you. And next person, can someone read the second slide, please? Do we have a volunteer for the second slide? I can do it. Great. Um, can everyone please just take a breath, breathe in and out? We pay homage to those who were stolen from Africa, placed in bondage, falsely named as chattel, and forced into labor, who were called slaves, but never submitted as such who have always been fully human with an unbroken connection to the divine and to each other. We honor our African ancestors for the un still unpaid labor which built what is now the Americas. Great, thank you. And who can walk us through the last slide? One more volunteer. We got some good stuff to get to who can read the last slide. This is the shortest one. Happy to. Okay, hey Heather. Hi. Um, everyone can take a deep breath. To both our indigenous and African forebears, we commit to the continued struggle for liberation and reparations for it is only through freedom and justice that we truly give honor. Aho, ashe. Thank you, thank you so much. And before we get into um, the work that we're gonna do for today, 
Um, we committed to every class, we're gonna open up just with a few victories. And so this is a more than a few. And I think um, uh, Tyler would probably tell me that I missed some, but I just wanna uplift that we had May Day. There was a May Day March in Boyle Heights where many of us came together. And it was a beautiful showing of black, brown and indigenous solidarity as well as solidarity um, with allies and accomplices. We preserved for another week, the drum circle um, and Africatown, which is Lamert Park. Um, hundreds came out for the May Day edition of N Police Associations, including union members from the California Faculty Association, United Teachers Los Angeles, um, IBW and IATSE, um, and probably more, but those are the ones I could remember off the top of my head. Yesterday, we passed a check the sheriff resolution unanimously in the LA County Board of Supervisors. Many of you know that the LA County Sheriff's Department engages in at least three different kinds of assaults when they kill people and LA County Sheriff's kills a lot of people. Um, they steal the body, they attempt to assassinate the character of the person that they killed. And then they've been engaging in this pattern of harassment of the families of those that they killed. And um, we had a listening session with the families, with supervisors Hilda Solis and Holly Mitchell a few weeks ago, and they turned what they learned from those sessions into a resolution um, which passed unanimously in the Board of Supervisors yesterday. Many of the families of those killed by police were um, gave uh, public comment and testimony. Um, and it bore fruit. Um, we also just got off a Twitter storm where we made People's Budget LA and defund the police trend number one in the state. Um, did we launch? We officially launched our new website, endpoliceassociations.com. So check that out when we're not in class, endpoliceassociations.com. And we're having our presentation of the People's Budget LA um, findings tomorrow and we confirmed five city council members that are gonna be attending, including Nuri Martinez, um, Marquise Harris Dawson, Kevin DeLeon, um, Curran Price and Mike Bonin. And so those are our victories for the week. Does anybody else have a victory that they wanna share? Anybody else have a victory? Remember, one of the things that we're learning in this class is that as we struggle for Black power, um, we can't wait until the end to celebrate victories because the freedom is a constant struggle, right? And if we're always in a state of struggle without pausing to take in the victories, it'll become a very depleting process and we'll burn out, right? And so it's really important that as we win victories, we say, hey, we did that. So, uh, hey, you did that. So Tyler, it was Tyler and Richie's idea to have this Twitter storm today. They did that and we all jumped in and we have to say, you know, that was a great idea, Tyler and Richie. It worked, you know, thank you to everybody who retweeted, right? If we don't make those pauses, it's gonna become a very depleting um, and even traumatizing process, right? We have to pause and tell the families of those who have been coming out and re-traumatizing themselves every time they tell the story of the murders of their loved ones. I think about how many times Anthony Vargas's family has come out, how many times Daniel Hernandez's family has come out, how many times Sister Helen Jones, who's been fighting for her son, John Horton, since 2009, has told the story of how her son was beaten to death inside Men's Central Jail and talks about him having flashlight imprints in his skull, his busted liver and spleen. And she talks about it in detail over and over and over again. If we didn't say, look, Sister Helen, look what you won. You won this. You won the passage of this motion that might not bring back John, but bring some semblance of justice in his name. If we didn't do that, then what would that mean for Sister Helen? So I wanna encourage you who've been doing work this week and in the weeks leading up to today to say, look, we did this, whatever it is. I got my kid, here's another victory I didn't put on my slide. 
I got my kids through the first week of in-person learning and reoriented myself into remembering that I got to wake up hella early and actually put on clothes to drive kids to school. And now you got to like download this um, daily pass, which is so stupid, right? Download a daily pass, put it on your phone. I navigated the fact that I can't do it when I get to campus because there's no reception on campus. I got to do it before I leave the house. I packed lunch for my kids, you know? That's victories. What victories do you have? So we gonna sit here. I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> yes, please go, Yolanda. I just miraculously got my second Moderna shot. And I went to Dodger Stadium and I was worried because my appointment was at 11. I was like, I'm not going to get back here in time. So I heard over the weekend that they were just like, just show up. It doesn't matter if you have an appointment or not. And so I got there at 10, 15, and I was out by 11. So I am fully dose to Moderna gang and 14 days, I will be giving out free hugs to everyone. All right. And I'm very, I'm very excited that I think over the weekend, there was one day where there were no COVID deaths. So I feel like that we're, and like, I hear what's going on in India. So I'm not getting super like excited, but I'm glad that it's getting better here in Los Angeles. Cause it was a mess over the winter. So I am feeling hopeful that we can safely without harming anyone. And I feel better that I, I feel better that I may not be in a position where I will accidentally give COVID to someone. So I feel glad that I'm vaccinated and grateful of all the brilliant scientists who were able to put this vaccine together so quickly and, um, yeah, just hoping those two doesn't knock me out. So if you see me like passed out later, <laughs> Dr. Abdullah said, Yolanda, or can you unmute this person? I might be passed out. So Allie, just be on the lookout and make sure that like things are running smoothly because I don't know how this second dose is going to affect me. And how about navigating that time management challenge? That's always for me a victory, right? Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? And hey, Zena, pro bono ASL, I've been missing you. Good to see you. Who else we got who has a victory? Nobody else? Why y'all so quiet today? I can, I can share one. Yes. Um, I'm not on camera because I just finished a run and I'm kind of gross. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. Who are you? Who are um, you? I'm Melissa. I'm an SVP partner. Um, I sent a link around to all my friends this week for Hollaback's um, bystander trainings, bystander intervention trainings. And I just got a really great response from friends who were like, I'm going to sign up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to learn how to, including some friends that, um, oh, you can't see me. I'm a white person. Um, and I have a, uh, I have some friends that I engage with a lot, but who don't always engage back. And one of them called me yesterday and she said, the first thing I want to tell you is I signed up for the bystander intervention and I'm really, um, I'm really excited to be able to do it. And it led to a really good conversation that we've never been able to have before. And that was just, that was just, you know, I keep going, you know, keep plodding along, keep trying. And so I was glad to, glad to see that. Um, and just, you know, glad to see that folks uh, continue to engage in, in my circle. So great. Well, thank you. So since people are reluctant to share their victories, we're going to keep it moving, but you do have homework that we're going to share. So get your um, uh, courage together because we're going to need you to weigh in for this class, okay?
Um, I want to remind us. Oh, it shouldn't say slight with abolition quote quote. But <laughs> I want to remind us um, of of uh, kind of how we're walking into this and why we're doing this visioning of the world. We started with a quote from Angela Davis about what is abolition. And Angela Davis says that abolition is not primarily a negative strategy. It's not primarily about dismantling, getting rid of, but it's about re-envisioning. It's about building anew. And so we have to remember that and we have to think about what it is we want to build anew. And one of the things that you were encouraged to do over this last week is steal back time from a system that tries to take it all so that we never have time to actually vision, right? As we were reading through Black Power, we know that there was visioning work that went into the birthing of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, right? There was visioning work that was necessary to move us from civil rights to black power. There was visioning work that was necessary as we thought about what a uh, student nonviolent coordinating committee needed to look like or as Stokely Carmichael or Kwame Ture thought about that. And so visioning is hugely important. Visioning has been at the core of every freedom struggle because real freedom struggle is not about tinkering around the edges of fundamentally unjust systems. It's about imagining and working towards new systems. And so we closed out last week by talking about why it's important for us to write our own vision statements, why it's important to imagine the world as we would have it. And so one of the ways that we do that is through a process of meditation. We asked, I asked, um, who actually meditates in this class? I encouraged you to take some moments to meditate. And we're gonna steal a little time out of the class to do a very short meditation that's led by one of my sister friend comrades, beautiful artist sister named Tony Blackman. And um, this meditation is just very short. It's seven minutes long um, and it's a guided meditation, which I need. I'm not very good at just sitting in silence and walking myself in and walking myself out. And I know some people say that, you know, that's kind of um, novice meditation. I don't care what you call it. I need a guide. And I hope that all of us will benefit from listening to Tony Blackman. Tell me if you can hear this or stop me if you can't, okay? Can everybody hear okay? Be like water making its way through cracks. Do not be assertive, but adjust to the object and you shall find a way to or through. If nothing within you stays rigid, outward things will disclose themselves. Empty your mind, be formless, shapeless like water. If you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, and it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. So set your sleep. Let it flow. Let it flow. Like water. Yes. Let it flow.
flow downstream, never upstream. The path of least resistance is that with the least resistance, that which most complements your existence flow like water. Water cannot be contained or restrained. It is capable of conquering. It teaches us many lessons about surrendering. I am water. You are water. Be like water. Our earth is water. 75% as is our bodies. Let it flow like water. Listen to the water. Listen. Nature's lullaby. Where the falling from the sky are crashing against the shores. Listen and let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow and relax. Let it flow. Let it flow. your eyes, relax your eyelids, relax your cheekbones, relax your whole face, just relax, relax your tongue, relax your mouth, relax your neck, leaning your head slowly to the left, relax. Then leaning it slowly to the right, to the right. And gently rolling your neck around. Slowly around in a circle. Relax and let it flow. Breathing in, breathing out. Let it flow. Now visualize yourself letting it flow. Visualize yourself flowing like water. See yourself moving. Visualize it. Or maybe you actually are moving. You may be stretching your arms wide and high. You may be moving your hands down your body to your feet, bending over, forward, then coming up slowly going backward. See yourself moving, letting it flow, moving like water. See yourself swaying from side to side, from right to left, flowing. Maybe you're doing slight lunges and bends and stretches. Be free. Let what happens happen. Let it flow. Be shapeless. Be far formless. Be, 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 be like water. Let yourself be free. Let yourself flow while breathing in and out. And let us affirm together these words. I am letting it flow. Say it to yourself quietly. I allow it to flow. I move like water. Repeat it to yourself. I flow like water. I release the fears and let it flow. I practice being in flow with every breath I take. I let love flow. I let my thoughts flow. I let my energy flow. I flow like water. And so it is. I let it flow. Okay. How do we feel? How do we feel? Take a breath. How do you feel? Take another breath in. You had an assignment for today. Take a breath in. And I want you to think about all that image that you had for the world as you breathe in. Breathe in that image. And release it.
Do you see that image for the world? The one that you crafted over the last week, the one that came to you over the last week. Breathe that in and hold that image in your mind's eye. Hold it and release. Let's do that one more time. Breathe it in. Hold the image, not just in your mind, but let it settle in your spirit. Hold it in your whole body. Hold on to that breath and release. Open your eyes and someone share the image. What do you see? What do you see? Describe it for us. Well, I could read mine. Is that okay? <laughs> well, before we get to that, just describe for us what it is you see. Before you get to your actual statement, what is it that you're seeing? Mm. As you imagine the world in which you want to live, what do you see? I'll go. Hi, this is Marissa Hamamoto. Um, so sorry, I'm a dancer and I run a dance company. So I am a little biased with dance, but the images I saw were um, just people of all colors, all, all ages, all abilities, all gender identities, all sexual orientation identities, all just coming together and just dancing as one, so. That That's what, beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. I love the component of dance in what you see. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, can we come back to you? Definitely. So what do you see, Stephanie? Um, I saw um, people setting their tables, um, mm. setting tables with food, flowers, preparing to, preparing to share a meal with loved ones. Um, and I saw people having lots of spaciousness in their lives to create like whatever their personal creation is. Um, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that food is part of it. <laughs> Who else wants to share what they see? What they see? I'm happy to hop in. Um, and actually, I think it, it was an image that just got even stronger um, after that meditation. Um, it was a really beautiful image of being in like very bountiful nature, um, like mountains and rivers and, and people. Um, it was like a house with a garden um, and really just seeing this community of, of humans and people really integrating with the environment and the earth in a like loving and healing way. Um, which is very interesting for me. I consider myself a city rat and I like, love cities. Um, so I'm slightly shocked of how picturesque and like clear that image was. Um, but it, it was very beautiful. Great. Anybody else itching to share what they see? I'm going to just share an image for myself that I see ocean, I see ocean, and I see my children um, unburdened by school, unburdened by struggle, 
Um, I, like Misha, also am a, I've only lived in cities. And it is surprising that, you know, cities become kind of confining spaces. And I think about writings like City of Courts that talk about how these structures are really there to confine us and to get us to conform. Um, and so I guess it's natural for us to want spaces, to desire spaces that are actually natural spaces that are free spaces, right? Um, and so that's what I see. Um, the next question is what does the world sound like? Heather won't be surprised at this slide because she knows me pretty well. <laughs> um, so the world that I envision has to have Prince music in it, right? What does the world sound like for you? Let's get a couple of folks to share what the world sounds like for you. Well, I can share mine if I can screen share because I made a little slide so you can see it, but then you can also hear it. That's okay. Yeah, can we give Heather yeah. co-host privileges? Yeah, please? everyone, one second. So what you'll see on this is um, I was given a great, great benefit in the 80s. My mom used to take me down to the roller dancer space at Venice Beach. And you should uh, be able to share your screen now. Um, Tell me your name so I can put you on camera too. Heather Miller. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't there. Uh, okay. Um, so this is a, it's a still shot from a movie of uh, roller dreams from 2017 but it's basically um, the sounds of joy and laughing and dancing and everyone's there and whatever body type race age sexual orientation um, dancing to the same groove and just enjoying the mm. music with the heavens above and the earth below and the sea nearby um, so that would be mine but uh, a lot of 80s music but that's just because of the product of that's when I used to go there. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Anybody else want to share what the world sounds like for them? I'm happy to share. share. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jacqueline. I saw you first. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. Um, I was uh, envisioning just really unhindered deep laughter and especially from children um, and thinking of the sounds of play and exploration um, and the way uh, hearing also like adults in that mix just really affirming um, children and their growth and their beauty um, and fullness and um, yeah, just a lot of laughter and music and Joy. I love that. I love that. There is no better sound than the sound of children's laughter, right? Yes, yes. Um, who was that? The Was that Allie who also started to share? Yeah, it was me. Because um, I also saw a lot of abundance of land, but then I also started seeing like in the cities and just like abundance of space within like this this busy city that we live in. Um, what I hear is uh, birds and nature and uh, within the city, no helicopters, of course, um, and just feeling a sense of peace of he hearing laughter from neighbors and things like that. Um, that's not overrun by cars and just busyness, really. That's beautiful. One of the things that you're bringing to me that I feel like I have to share right now is that there are these structures and impositions that try to get us to conform to particular standards. And when we don't conform, you know, we're um, ridiculed, right? So as you talked about birds, what came to me is that in my neighborhood, there's this flock of wild parrots. It's, I think it's magic, right? So I take walks every day, like I never miss a day, like ever, no matter what, I never miss a day. And when I walk in my neighborhood, these parrots come like, there's hundreds of these bright green parrots. 
And my kids laugh because I always stop in my tracks and say, hey, parrots. And then I start talking to them in parrot language, right? Um, and people think that's a little crazy, right? But so what? It's, it's, isn't it crazy to not acknowledge the magic of seeing green parrots flying in the middle of Los Angeles and that are circling around your head and you're pretending like there's nothing happening. You're ignoring the world around you, right? Isn't it, um, I think it's crazy that we don't laugh with each other, that we're told constantly to kind of suppress our emotions and suppress our attachments to each other. So this process of visioning is about shaking off these shackles that tether us to a system of white supremacist, patriarchal, heteronormative, capitalist normalcy, right? This is not normal. This is an imposition of an oppressive system. So we have to think about what the world should look like, should sound like. And being an abolitionist means abolishing those confines in whatever space we occupy. And I see that Ashley is raising her hand. So Ashley, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I think I agree with everyone, especially on like the nature. Um, just hearing, yeah, birds, looking at the hummingbirds. But I think what I also hear is it being multilingual. I grew up in a multilingual household and you know, my family speaks a lot of English, but my partner's family speaks a lot of Spanish. And so I'm one of those kids that's kind of bilingual, but kind of not at all because um, we do the Spanglish so much. So that is, um, that is definitely what I hear is like multilingual. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to move from what the world um, sounds like to what the world smells like. Let's get into that. What does the world smell like? The world that we're gonna engage all five of our senses. So what does the world smell like? Um, probably not like the current downtown, right? Like what does the world that you envision smell like? Or that you imagine smell like? Somebody can just unmute. I'll go. I'm Danielle Wildcrest. My pronouns are she, her. Right now I'm at Brilliant Corners. Um, and I'm going to cheat and throw a couple of things in there. But my um, image, which also had a really delicious meal involved, was had a really warm, quiet to it. Um, and the smell would be of honeysuckle because um, I grew mm. up in parts of the South and it just has this really, um, to me, it's like the smell of warm flowers or something, you know, um, it's really rich. Um, but I, I wanted to emphasize the quiet part because it's not a, like a cold silence. It's just like quiet so that you're really just turning inward and with other people, but at like a sensory level um, and not even really having to use words, but just really being with people and in their energy. Yes. Yes. Someone else, what does the world smell like? What does the world smell like? Allison? Allison, is your hand up? I, um, for me, it was so clear where it just smelled. It brought me back to when I was like seven years old and I smelled fresh, like super ripe, juicy papaya, papaya and mango and like sea salt. Just like, I don't know, just like beautiful, like where when you're a kid and you're not worrying about paying the bills and making an appointment and like all those things, it's just like simplicity simple pleasures. So that's what I really smell very clearly. Well, you're moving us very quickly into what does the world taste like? 
right? Because <laughs> mango absolutely tastes like freedom to me. Um, what does the world taste like to everyone else? Jasmine and fried onions. Oh, that sounds good. What does it taste like? What does it taste like? Probably the fried onions, but not the jasmine. What does it taste like to you? Y'all must not be. I, like, oh, what? go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, I know I already spoke. Um, I was giving space, but I'll jump in. I definitely would say mangoes. I bought these earlier. Um, but I'd say it tastes like home cooked meals. For me. Yes. Yes. Anybody else? Looks like we have a bunch in the chat that folks have thrown in there. What do we have in the chat? Does anybody else say peach cobbler? <laughs> we have <laughs> raspberries off the vine, iced tea, a first kiss. Um, a nice cold glass of beer, grandma's Creole Sunday lunch, which I'm sure has uh, some peach cobbler there, greasy pizza, churros, adobo, brisket, pastrami, rose water, tacos, uh, cotton candy, lemon, baklava, like everything. You know what I love about these examples? Like you can feel them all. You know, when you think about cotton candy, it's not the taste of cotton candy, it's the feeling of cotton candy, right? Like cotton candy is really not that good, right? But it's the feeling of cotton candy, right? There's no confining space. You would never have cotton candy in a sad place, right? Or an oppressive place or not oppressive to us at least. Now I'm thinking about circuses, but we could get down a whole nother road. Um, but when we think about these things, it's really where we're engaging on a different level, not just an intellectual level, um, but a different level. And then finally, what does the world feel like? What does the world feel like? The world of our radical imaginings. What does that feel like? Let's take two folks because we do want to get into your vision statements. <laughs> Feels like hitting the snooze button, that's hilarious. How about there are no alarms? How about there are no alarms? You get to sleep until you wake up. Anybody else? So yesterday, I, um, the mother of Kenneth Ross Jr., who's become, we call each other besties. Her name is Sister Fuzia Amaru. Um, yesterday was the third anniversary of um, her son's funeral. And she asked me to go with her to his grave site, which sounds really heavy. But as we sat, we, um, you know, we call each other besties because we have a really good time, right? And so she wrote, drove really fast down Crenshaw in her car and I was in the passenger seat, which was great. I love being in a passenger seat. We got to Inglewood Cemetery and we pulled up near the plot where Kenneth is and we pulled out candles and flowers and champagne and incense and we sat next to Kenneth's headstone and she wept and talked about how much she missed him. And then when we settled into the space, it was just this beautiful day. And we poured out some champagne for Kenneth. And then we kind of laid back on the grass and closed our eyes and the sun just kind of covered us and you could feel like the spirit, not just of Kenneth, but of all of those people whose bodies were buried beneath the ground. And it felt like 
they were embracing us and it was beautiful. And I feel like a lot of times we don't take moments. I, I also committed myself to, um, I said, why don't I walk in graveyards? I know graveyards are supposed to be scary spaces, but I didn't feel afraid at all. I felt really held, you know? And um, we don't take moments we're confined from like we're inside right now we live in los angeles if you looked outside or most of us looked at, live in los angeles if you look outside it is a perfect day right how do we kind of engage with a world where we can feel the world where we can feel each other we where we can um you know really take moments to feel those embraces from the earth from you know, whatever the global connection we have is, I say it's spirit and from each other. And so just if two more folks wanna weigh in on what the world feels like, and then I wanna get to your vision statements. What does it feel like to you? Feels like not a Zoom. I shared once, but I can share again. If yes, please. Um, for me, it feels full. And um, I think to me, that means like full of connection, full of life, um, not necessarily like absent of hard feelings, but just very full of the abundance of love and connection and thriving that makes life. Um, yes. Thank you, Jess. That makes it full. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Just one more. Lucky says, in my radical imagination, there is always enough time to be with loved ones. In my world, the rush and hustle is lifted and everyone is included. That's beautiful. Does someone wanna read their vision statement? We have about 10 minutes and there's a few things that I wanna leave you with before we um, get into the next set of readings. You all had an assignment to write your vision statement. Who wants to read their vision statement? Dot, you look like you wanna read it for us. Do you wanna read it for us? Sure, thank you. I, you know, mine is actually um, what I refer to in my own head as a tweaker, that I need to tweak it here and there. But I think the, the main points of it is I try to live my life by the MICA mandate, mm. which is to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Uh, my background is journalism and interfaith work. And so amongst the things that I, I wrote down was that I, we obviously need to, to follow the biblical mandates of feeding the hungry clothing the, the naked, welcoming the immigrant. But I also added to that, we need to honor our elders. We can't talk about honoring our ancestors and not honor the, the aged that remain with us. And we flip that and it goes to caring for our children too, in a way that we don't separate families and that we give them an education that tells the truth and doesn't omit things. I myself am struggling right now. I'm 68 years old and I'm struggling with the fact that so much of my education that took place in Texas but could have taken place anywhere omitted um, 
scientific, journalistic, medical heroes that were people of different races, different ethnicities, different orientations. And for me to be my age and have to learn, for instance, the essential role that the African-American women played from the movie Hidden Figures, but how essential they were to our nation's space program. That was never mentioned. That was never taught in our classes. And I, and I feel really somewhat angry that that was omitted from my education. So I'm making sure my grandkids know these things. If they're not gonna get it in school, they're gonna get books from Nani and we're gonna read them together. But I also want, you know, want to base everything because of my background in journalism, the importance of communicating. And part of communications is not talking, but listening and listening to hear and not to reply. Mm -hmm. And so it's these type of things that I've written down as part of the vision that I would hope that people will adopt. And in, in doing so, um, I created a women's interfaith group several years ago. And part of our, uh, the keystone words that we have are peace, diversity, and inclusion. But I would hope that we could also add unity and how we build unity with the bridges of communications and respect and equality and equity. I'll let it go there. <laughs> thank you, Dad. I'm so glad I read your read into your body language and thank you for sharing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else? We have time probably for one more reading of your vision statement. Is there one more person who wants to go? Maybe someone we haven't heard from yet. How many of you actually completed that assignment? Raise your hand if you completed that assignment. Should I just randomly pick someone who has their hand raised? <laughs> now no all hands are going down. That was the plan. <laughs> Rebecca, do you want to share? Rebecca, are you willing to share? I can share if you want. Yes, please. Um, so I, I had an unfair advantage because I've, I've done this <laughs> before. Um, and mine is a little, um, a little, I mean, it's personal, but it's also focused on what I do. Um, and so my vision is for the world to be led by ethical, intelligent, and responsible leaders who cultivate a thriving society for all. And after responsible leaders, I have an asterisk. If you have a pulse, you can be this kind of leader. Okay. Okay, and I want us to constantly, Dot talked about being a tweaker, right? Constantly tweaking. Our vision statements should be statements that we constantly revisit and tweak and edit and develop. And as we experience the world and say, what do we wanna see, hear, feel, touch, smell, right? Um, did I say all of them? I think so, right? Um, we should be tweaking our vision statements, we should allow our vision statements to constantly evolve. And out of the reason that we're doing that is because out of our vision statements, we're actually developing a plan because I know many of you are going, why are we meditating and visioning and talking about Prince music um, when this is supposed to be a black power class, right? Well, as we work towards black power, as we work towards black freedom and black liberation, 
we have to ground ourselves in vision so that the work that we're doing in the world is tied to something, right? Otherwise, we can get easily caught up in things that are not really aligned with a larger vision. So our vision statements are our inclusive and affirmative statements that define the community that we are working to build, right? And I would actually say that, um, who was that who just spoke? That as we talk, tell us your name again. It's Denise Berger. Denise. Um, as we think about leaders that um, I ascribe to a model of leadership that um, Ella Baker um, gave birth to, group-centered leadership, the idea that we are leaderful, we are all leaders, right? So building this world really requires all of us. And so as we think about that, we have to think about the spaces through which we're going to engage. So we have these visions of the world. We defined people with whom we're aligned. And then we think about where we want to tap in because all of these things become really large, lofty goals that are very difficult to achieve um, if we don't understand ourselves as part of a mosaic, right? That we're gonna be able to engage in certain efforts, but not in every effort, right? So as we talk about Prince music, I should not be the one that is helping to produce music for the world because I suck. I can appreciate Prince music. I can dance, you know, in the way that um, was talked about, but I should not, and, and not like, you know, dance like a professional dancer, but appreciate the music with my body, right? <laughs> um, but I shouldn't be producing art, right? I believe that I'm good at educating and mobilizing and speaking to people and those are my gifts. And so I should work on those systemic level efforts and then kind of boil it down to a range of objectives that speak to those systems. So this visioning process is essential as we talk about how we move in the world so that we're not called to actions that um, are problematic and don't align with our vision. I'm realizing that we're at time, but I just want to give us some calls to action. And I want us to think about how we um, operationalize the visions and the images and the sounds and the smells and the tastes and the feelings that we've talked about today, that we've been um, kind of pondering over the last week. I wanna encourage you to be involved. I wanna encourage you to come out to the action. Um, today, if you're in Los Angeles, please come to our end police associations action every Wednesday at three o'clock. I'm coming with renewed spirit because I got a meditation in, but we'll also have plenty of music. There's gonna be lots of love. We try to really develop the space into one that more fully aligns um, with our vision. So we're standing beneath this beautiful mural. There's people pulling snacks in a wagon, right? So if food is a motivator for you, food will be there. Um, and please join us as we um, talk about how to harness our power and topple the systems that don't serve us, including policing, and build up new ones. On Thursday, we're going to be presenting um, People's Budget LA to City Council as well as to the people. So please log into that. Um, it'll be live on Facebook, quick things that you can do, complete the People's Budget LA survey, peoplesbudgetla.com slash survey, um, and sign the petition to fire the police chief, fire LAPD chief Moore. You can listen for more on Monday's um, Move the Crowd. Are we talking about, what are we talking about on Monday? Oh, New Black City. So this is absolutely visionary. It's grounded in vision. What would Los Angeles look like if it was the world of our most radical Black imaginings? We're going to be talking with artists about an um, uh, um, exhibit that's opening at the Museum of Social Justice next week that Black Lives Matter is partnered with the museum on. It's called New Black City, so please tune in Monday morning at 7 a.m. as we talk about that. And that's all I have for you today. Um, no homework. We are transitioning into Freedom Dreams by Robin Kelly for the next two weeks. And so we're gonna encourage you to continue to freedom dream, continue to do work, continue to kind of 
put some meat on the bones of you know your vision for the world and um inshallah we'll see you next wednesday thank you thank you y'all thank, thank you bye thank you